Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be showing you my cloud nails, which is the second part of the nails I did in my last video. I will have that video linked in the iCards for you guys in case you missed it. Hey, this is Zach. Be sure to hit subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never miss out when Chala uploads new videos. And when you hit subscribe, you'll be part of her polished pride. So I will be starting this design using some Young Nails White 101. And I'm first starting with this 3D art brush. This is meant to use for like um, acrylic 3D shaping, but I have one for my acrylic and one for my gel products. I didn't really like this brush for the gel, so I chose to use that for my painting instead. So I noticed that that wasn't giving me quite the round fluffiness of the clouds that I was looking for, so I switched to a more rounded, firmer brush. And I'm just using that to kind of press the pigment of the gel polish into the areas of the cloud where I want it to be. And then I kind of fade it out towards the bottom. I will go back in with my 3D art brush and clean that up in a moment. But I'm, I dabbed the 3D art brush into that white polish just to try to fade it down a little bit further. And then I wiped it off and cleaned it with some rubbing alcohol and then I'm using it just to clean up that bottom. Now I'm gonna be using a dotting tool and going forward with my nails, I will start this way from now on. So I will use the dotting tool to get most of the pigment up around the top of the cloud. And then I will use my rounded little beetles brush to kind of fade that polish down into the body of the cloud. So I'll just continue kind of working that down and then tapping it out with my little beetles brush. So my question of the day for you guys is, what is the weather like where you are? Last week, actually just on the weekend, we had like 90 degree weather and now all of a sudden it's 45 degrees. Yes, you heard me correctly, 45 freaking degrees. <laughs> so cold and I hate it so much. I mean, I love the fall months, but the fall months is like 60, 70 degrees, not 45. I'm like, I'm not ready for winter yet. <laughs> I'll keep you warm. <laughs> so I'm just gonna continue doing the same thing using my dotting tool just to kind of define the shape of the cloud where I'd like it to be. And then I'll use my little brushes to kind of um, feather it out and fade it out towards the bottom. And I'm trying to make sure that the clouds are not exactly the same, that they're not so uniform because I want them to be cartoony, but I also kind of want them to be realistic a little. It's kind of like a in-between for me. I didn't want them overly cartoony, but I didn't want them to be perfectly realistic either. So I wasn't sure if I was going to put the clouds on that full glitter nail, so I skipped over it for now and went on to my middle ombre nail, which that nail for me, this one I'm working on right now, that turned out to be my favorite of my cloud nails. I just, I love how the colors go together, how the ombres down from the nude into the blue, it just fit perfectly with that theme for me. And if you notice, when I am creating the bottom of the cloud, you can almost see it, like a little shadowing underneath there. And that is because I had top coated these nails previously. Now normally in a design you don't necessarily want shadowing, but for a design like this where it's clouds, that shadowing is perfect. So having that top coat on there allowed it to have this next layer raised up just slightly a little bit, which created that shadowing effect and I really, really love the way that it looks. So I'm just going to continue doing the same thing, working back and forth between my brushes using my dotting tool cr to create the shape and then blending it out with the brushes. And anytime you see me switch to that 3D brush, that one is going to be dipped in alcohol and then completely drained so that I have a clean brush, but it's not going to allow any alcohol to flood back into that gel polish. I am also flash curing the clouds for about five to six seconds before moving on to the next and that way if for any reason I bump it, it's not gonna get ruined, and that way it stays in place and doesn't run. So just in between 
after I finish one cloud, I just give it a quick five, six second flash cure to hold it nicely in place. So I'm gonna let you guys watch as I continue to do this on the next couple of nails. I will be doing the clouds on both the pinky and the pointer, and they will be full cloud nails rather than just a couple of them with the ombre. She addicted, she addicted to the manicures and coffee But don't say that, cause she ain't that No, she is more than she seem She addicted, she addicted to the manicures and coffee But don't say that, cause she ain't that No, she is more than she seem Yeah, she more than a picture And she don't need a man to save her She's so much more than these manicures and coffee She a boss she a queen, she the whole team College education, she gon' get it Maybe be a doctor or maybe one for Senate She don't need you, she's so independent She gon' kill it, it don't matter where she at it she addicted, she addicted to the manicures and coffee But don't say that, cause she ain't that No, she is more than she seem She addicted, she addicted to the manicures and coffee But don't say that, cause she ain't that No, she is more than she seem Quick disclaimer on this pinky nail, there is some color missing up in that top corner. That is because I had to repair this nail on the free edge before I built it with the acrylic. So there was a couple layers of a builder in a bottle clear gel. So I didn't want to make the nail overly thick. So I didn't add too much product of that nude acrylic. And then when I filed in that back cuticle and sidewall area, I kind of filed through the color and went into that clear gel. I knew I was going to be putting clouds there anyways, so I just kind of left it be. So I just wanted to let you guys know that is why it looks that way. But it, I assure you it is smooth in that area. There is no kind of dips or anything like that.
coming in a way So I say it to your face Better only tell the truth Yeah, I'm trusting you Every time you come around Make me think you my dude Think I know you either way Yeah, I know you want me stay Yeah So are you down to ride with a bitch like me? Will you come around with a bitch like me? Told you don't play around with a bitch like me. Cause I've been around and you've been around. Like you don't know it, know it. You stuck me on the low key. I like it. So now I'm gonna be preparing for my next step. So I'm going to take some of my top coat and apply that onto my little palette, and then I'm gonna mix in a little bit of the white gel paint, excuse me, the white gel polish that I had been using previously, and mixing just a little bit of it in with that top coat, and that way it dilutes it and gives it a nice sheer wash of color when I go in to use it later on. And I'm going to be using this white gel paint with a very small detail brush and I'm going to create some little those little like light flares where it's kind of like um a little a bling <laughs> I don't even know what these are called every time I try to explain them to my husband I say you know the little sparkly little ting thing <laughs> um he actually got my name tattooed on his chest Recently, I've had my, his name tattooed on my back for like 13 years now. <laughs> so recently he got my name tattooed on him and he got these little four point star light flare things, whatever they are. Ting. Yes, ting. <laughs> it's so funny. He always laughs when I say it, but I'm like, I don't know how else to explain it. That's what it reminds me of, like a little bling of light shining. <laughs> so I'm just using my little detail brush and I start by creating the straight up and then like this straight across, almost like a, like a cross or a plus sign. And then I start rounding out the kind of meeting corners there. I know it is so hard for me to like explain what I'm doing. It's so much easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. There are a few times that, that my hand is getting in the way and you can't exactly see what I'm doing. I tried to edit out most of that so that you guys didn't have to sit there and watch my hand just be in the way. And the reason so much of the time my hand was in the way is because when I'm going for a really fine detail, I stand my brush up almost completely on its end, like a 90 degree angle. And that gives me really, really fine details. So sometimes it was just not possible for my hand to stay out of the way. <laughs> So again, I'm just going to start by drawing a straight line down, making sure that I allow it to kind of point out at the tips. So it's kind of wider in the center and then comes to a really fine point at the tips of it. And then I will go across and do the same thing. I am making sure that I am picking up that gel paint before going in with my next stroke. That way it can flow nicely off of my brush. Now for some people it is easier to use a longer striping brush for these types of designs or any kind of line work, but my hands shake so badly guys, I'm sure you've noticed I'm super super shaky. So sometimes those long striper brushes are not nearly as easy for me and sometimes I get a lot more wiggly with those. It's, it's weird. I know. <laughs> so like I said before, I did the straight line up, straight line across, and then I kind of round out those inner corners. It's not really a corner though, it's just kind of where those two lines meet and that way it gives that really nice four point star look. Now this one I'm gonna do right on the edge of the nail and I wish I would have placed this more towards the center of the nail because after I get all of these applied, I'm going to apply little pieces of bling in the center of these stars and so for this one, the bling ended up being right on the edge of the nail and it kind of throws the shape of the nail off. 
it was actually really funny when I was showing my nails to my husband. He was like, what is that? Did you mess up? How did you mess up? You never mess up. What? It, what is that? <laughs> um, and I was like, it's, it's a rhinestone. I placed it too close to the side. And he was like, Shell, what are you doing? <laughs> it was so funny. The look on his face. He's like, oh my God, you're human. You make errors. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was so funny. So just take a lesson for me and keep those little light flare four point stars towards the center of the nail. And that way, when you put your little rhinestone in the center, it doesn't throw off the whole nail. <laughs> So this one I liked the most because I was able to keep it really, really thin. And it's because I worked mostly from the point of the brush with it almost at a 90 degree angle to the nail. I know it kind of jumped over me doing the center section there. And that's because my hand was in the way the whole time. So I apologize for that. And then I'm, I believe I'm only going to show you one on this nail because my hand got in the way quite a bit for that as well. But it's basically just the same thing as I've been doing the upward stroke, the sideways stroke, rounding out those inner corners at the center point. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into that diluted mixture of the top coat and the white gel polish. And I'm going to use that to create a circle in the center of my stars. This is going to kind of give it an effect that it, it almost creates like a halo around that center of the star and makes it look a lot more realistic and a lot closer to what you would really see from a light flare. Because with a light flare, if you look at them, you have those four points and then you've got the very defined center, but you've also got like a halo around that center where the color kind of fades. So I just wanted to mimic that the best that I could and so I just continued to use my little detail brush to move the polish around and get it the way that I liked this one I went a little too wide so I did have to clean it up a little bit as well before I cured it and if you start doing this and you notice that your polish is too diluted or not diluted enough and it's too opaque or it's too sheer you can always add more top coat or add more of the polish just work with it until you get the correct opacity and correct consistency that you're specifically looking for Okay, so once that one is done, I'm going to give it a 30 second cure and then we will go in with our bling application. I think you guys are going to get like a full two minutes of watching me <laughs> apply bling this time. And when I do it to that ring finger, that's, that's my favorite finger overall because it turned out so pretty. So I'm just going to be using a little bit of my favorite McCart rhinestone gel. And I'm putting the little rhinestones in the middle of the light flares and then also a couple just randomly on the nail to kind of balance out the overall effect. Now I don't do that on every nail, but on some of them, like on my thumb, I just felt like having the one off to the side didn't look quite right. So I chose to add a couple in other places as well. And here you can see how bad that one looked on the edge. <laughs> When I'm doing my bling application, I do also like to give a 15 second flash cure before moving on to the next finger. That way that they are frozen in place and they don't slide around at all when I'm working on the next fingers. So on this ring finger, I'm going to apply quite a bit of the rhinestone gel towards the back here and I'm just going to use an assortment of rhinestones and cluster them together. Then I will add some caviar beads in between to kind of balance the look. And to me, it just adds that extra little detail 
that really offsets the design. And I love it so much adding those little caviar beads. Okay, so now we're going to cure for a full minute and then we will go in with our top coat. I am using a no wipe top coat and I'm going to get it right up to the sides of each of the rhinestones, but I'm not gonna go over the top that way that they don't lose their shine and they catch the light really beautifully. But you do wanna make sure that you go right up to the edges and use a detail brush if necessary to make sure that they are fully coated around the edges, which will help keep them on the entire time you were wearing the set. When I was going through with this top coat, I don't know what happened, but like, oh my gosh, guys, there were so many fuzzes. And on this pointer finger, there was a fuzz that got left in that I didn't realize until afterward, and it left texture in the top coat of my pointer finger. It was driving me nuts. It felt like the bubble technique where you use soap, soap bubbles to create the texture. It felt like that, except for it wasn't intentional. It sucked. <laughs> it was the so I ended up having to use my buffer and I just kind of buffed it smooth and then reapplied my top coat because I definitely could not have kept these nails on with that kind of texture. <laughs> so I'm just gonna continue doing the same thing, applying my top coat and using my detail brush to get up and around each of the little rhinestones. If on like a finger like this one where I can get right up against the rhinestones, this one just has the one, um, so I don't need to use my detail brush on this one, I just use my brush from the top coat bottle. But on the rest, I do end up using my detail brush just to make sure I make all the little edges and corners. And then between fingers, I do also flash cure these for 10 seconds. That way, like I said before, it stays in place when I'm doing my next finger. Now with this one, since I do have caviar beads, I'm going to add a little dollop of extra top coat, and then I'm going to use my detail brush and I'm gonna go on top of the caviar beads, and then I'll make sure to get behind and around each of the little rhinestone pieces. And if there's any bits in the center where there's like an extra little gap, like in the rhinestones right down in the center, those kind of pinkish ones, that had a gap in the middle of them, so I made sure to fill that with top coat as well. And that way we don't have any hair getting stuck or anything pulling and lifting those off when we're wearing the nails. So I'm gonna clean off any top coat that was touching the skin and give a full 60 second cure as my final cure. And now I'm gonna go in with my cuticle oil and we will be all done.
I am absolutely in love with how these nails turned out. Yes, it may be cold here already, but these ones are kind of summery and I'm so glad that I did them. I've been seeing the cloud nails everywhere and had planned to do them and kind of drug my feet on it, but I'm so glad I did because I absolutely love them. Definitely gonna have a hard time taking them off in the end. <laughs> Make sure you guys let me know what you think of the set down below. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, suggestions, or requests for different sets, let me know down below. I love to hear from you. Be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.